Good morning. Got our little piggies fed here. I guess they're not that little. But as you can see, October has arrived. The sun's trying to, where, can you can see the sun, there it is. It's trying to poke its way through there. Yeah, a lot of projects to get done. A lot of things we're working on. Um, but I wanted to cover the pig pen and, uh, and what we're trying to do here uh, with this little mobile fencing structure that we have. Uh, it's a Premier One fence. As you can see, it is one piece. So this is the, I wanna say 164. I think it's 164. Yeah, 164 because we got another one that is uh, 82. So I believe that's correct. Um, this is uh, working pretty well for the pigs. Now, Mangalitsas are kind of, they're a gentler pig, so they're not as aggressive. Um, and our goal was to get them to kind of till this up because this is where we're going to put pumpkins next year. But I think what I need to do is buy a little bit of corn and kind of sprinkle it on here or some something that they really want to dig for because they've only dug up like a select few areas and they really love water. So um, they haven't dug up right in the center, which is kind of where I wanted them to dig. And uh, so we're going to try doing some supplemental feed. We don't generally give them corn, but uh, I do have a decent feed store with non-GMO corn not too far away. So I might pick up a bag of that and see if we can get some more tillage uh, done in here so that uh, we're ready to plant some pumpkins and squashes and whatnot next year. Uh, my wife did just get some new seeds for that, so she's really excited to expand that down here in the summer and uh, hopefully we can we can get that accomplished. The uh, Premier One, I'm gonna switch this camera around so you can see the unit. All right, so here is the actual battery and solar panel portion of the, uh, the fence charger here. So as you can see, this is a solar IntelliShock 60. It is very, very, very user-friendly. I'm I'm very happy with this. It's got a very robust uh, cover on it, so the battery sits inside that along with you can store your cables um, and you can adjust the pitch of the solar panel. I probably don't have this pitched exactly right. It will be, this will, by noon, it'll start really catching, but um, we have such a weird solar pattern here. Once winter hits, we'll get very low over above those trees, so the sun will come up over there. So. Uh, it's fine because I haven't had any issues yet, so it's doing it's doing the job. But you can adjust that, and obviously, this has uh, stakes on the bottom. So there's little teeny stakes, and that's how you can ground mount it. Obviously, you could also do a pole mount if that's something you wanted to do as well. Especially once the snow starts falling, you're going to want to get that up higher, right? Uh, easy little uh, turn knobs for the uh, charge and for the ground, and then we just put in a nice. Um, ground rod, technically you should probably put that in another foot or two, but I want to have, I want to be able to move it without too much of a problem. So we got about five feet into the ground and that's working just fine. Uh, this is the little clamp where you put it on that clip. And I would say this is technically poultry netting. So let me give the caution about this fencing. Um, you need to make sure in the pen that you don't have pigs that are super aggressive because here's my concern with this and pigs is that if you have a pig that really wants to get to something outside of the fence, this could get wrapped up. I don't have it on right now so I can touch it. If some some reason you forget to turn it on or the power stops functioning on it, you could the pig could get tangled up in here technically. Um, I don't have to worry about, I mean, I'm home most of the time. I'm working working from the house, so I can keep a pretty close eye on everything. And I can see them right out of the back window. So if there is an issue, but I probably wouldn't feel real comfortable, you know, putting this way out in a blind spot of a pasture and just letting the pigs be. Because if this does fault for some reason, uh, they could get tangled up, like I said. So this is not, this is, you know, technically poultry netting. Um, but setup was very, very easy. Uh, you just follow the instructions for rolling it out. And, you know, this took me maybe with driving in the T-post. I did T-post supports on the corner for obvious reasons. Um, uh, so four T-posts all around where the corners of the pen are. Probably took me 10 minutes to set up, about 15 minutes to set up the fence. And then another 10 minutes to go around and pound the T-post and make sure everything was good. So call it a half an hour. And then we built our little pig structure here 
which is just very uh, rudimentary. But we double tarped it and it does have tires on the back and as you can see they kind of started to dig here. And um, so the front end does not have wheels. So we just used two 16 foot cattle panels and uh, bent those around a wood frame at the bottom. This is just stuff I had on hand. So I didn't go out and buy anything and make it look super fancy. Uh, zip tied the tarp to the cattle panels and we were all set. That T post there is because they will try to scratch themselves on the frame of that uh, little, of the pig unit there. And so with the T post there, it stops the <laughs> rear end of the, uh, of the shelter there from swinging around and possibly getting pushed into the fence, which would obviously cause a massive problem. Um, they started to do some digging back here. So they're doing work around the back of the pen, but uh, not so much over in the center. So yeah, they seem to be hitting the corners. So yeah, we're gonna try the corn. Um, Mangalitsas, they're great pigs, and like I said, they, I think they're a little uh, friendlier than the Yorkshires. Now, obviously, it's mostly dependent on how you raise them, right? These guys are like little dogs, well, big dogs, I should say. Um, so they uh, they behave fairly well, and we want to touch base on the watering system. Pigs are notorious for scratching and rubbing and digging, and we have the drip water over here, and so. We have uh, two T posts, two T posts that have been uh, driven into the ground, as you can see. Ratchet strap. Don't let this thing kind of float in the wind because they will start to pull on that. They'll chew everything. So they're getting pretty used to this system. Uh, early on, if I let this kind of flopping down, they would start pulling on this strap and trying to decouple everything. Um, and those two T posts in the front are because they will try to scratch themselves on the watering container and then knock it over. So um, if I go around to the front, which I'll do right now, I'll show you the actual nipple water. So at the front of the water here, um, so I got these water jugs for free from a garage sale from a neighbor, and they work just fine. I think these are they're 15 or tw I think they're 20s. Um, that's, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. You could use uh, 35s, you could use 55, even that'd be a pain in the butt. Hey, honey. Hi. You talking? Do you get full? Are you full? Yeah, good girl. So that is the nipple water. So we just went on Amazon and got a five pack of those. They're labeled as swine waters. And then went out to, uh, we got like a North Portier tractor supply and got the uh, half inch threaded, um, uh, what do you call that? Not a bulkhead, but you guys know what it is. So, uh, and then you just tighten that up from the inside. And I cut this hole in here because I can get my arm in there to clean it. So we're getting low on water, so next it'll be time for me to stick my hand in there and scrub it out. So, um, yeah, with that and these two T-posts here, they make them come in straight on, hit the nipple water, and they will scratch on these T-posts rather than trying to push against the water, and this has worked out well. Obviously, you want to elevate the water a little bit. I just threw a cinder block. I did have two under there in their other pig pen, but what they ended up doing was kind of pushing that loose one in the front out. So one of them just works fine for that, and it uh, the other one just ends up rolling all over the pen as they play with it. So that's just a very um, quick and dirty way to set up the water so that they're not knocking stuff over. And they've been in here for about eight, nine days so far with zero issues with uh, with the water system. Now this is something that took me a while to get right. I was playing with it in their pen and uh, so I just carried this on over to here. Also, it's very easy to move. So if you've got a water that's not, you know, 35, 50 gallons, you can easily dump half this uh, water out and then you can just pull up these T-posts. And then, for example, we're gonna move them over to there um, before the weather gets bad. We're going to move them straight over on that side. So obviously I can just pick these T-posts up and uh, redrive them in very, very quickly. And uh, makes it nice and mobile. Took their uh, little water bath out. Um, and this is why if you have one of these waters and it's, and it's not very secure, they'll roll it. Um, I had rocks and bricks and all kinds of stuff in there to try to keep them from getting in. But uh, they definitely wanted to get in and nothing I was doing was kind of keeping them. They even pulled one of these rocks out which I, I don't even know how but um, they move around the stuff they flop and then they start pushing it with their nose and then something like that gets pushed into this fence 
obviously you can see where that could cause a fault. You could tear the uh, fibers in the fence, knock the fence down, all kinds of problems could happen. So when you have something that's uh, a very light duty fence like this, uh, just get rid of stuff like that. Don't even put it in here. Go with the nipple water and um, I should probably pull these rocks out, but they haven't really pushed them around. They kind of got bored with them once they weren't in the water. So that is our uh, quick and dirty. We're going to plant the garden or the the garlic over here. So uh, we are going to move them over onto that side and get that tilled up. Hi, honey. You going to say hello? And so we're just, we're trying this out using the little uh, pig plow method. And we'll see how it goes. And I will update all y'all when we have corn put in here and see if that works. I know like Joel Salton does that when he's trying to compost the uh, compost the cow manure. Um, so we're hoping, look at your nose. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're getting all dirty. You're getting all dirty. Yes. No, you cannot eat my gloves. All right, so they're done eating. And uh, I got to turn this fence back on before they get a little curious here. So I just lift it. I just lift it each time and then put it back. And um, I take this little guy here, burn this out. Oh, it's hot. I'm, I'm not thinking and I'm uh, recording. So we're hot now and then, let me turn it off real quick. Now your pigs obviously need to be trained very well with an electric fence. And uh, these pigs are, they were by the previous owner. And they can smell, they can sense that with their nose, the electric charge. So once it's hot, they're good to go. We got a bunch of other stuff we're gonna try to get to here in October. Uh, I wanted to touch base with this fence, great fence, um, no complaints. We're gonna use it for all different kinds of stuff. And um, we're gonna set up, I'll do a separate video, I guess, when I take this 82 footer set it up here and then just kind of tran move this line down, this fence line down, and then just kind of transition them over to there and we'll see how that goes. But all in all, this unit's ran well. Wanted to touch base one more thing. So if you do T-post supports on this poultry netting, these little fibers here, they will arc and then they'll, they'll burn. They'll start to kind of burn out. You'll hear a clicking both from where it's arcing and on here how it's uh, going green, that's what you want. If it's arcing bad, it'll go green red, green red, green red. And you'll you'll be like, whoa, is, uh, my battery's low. Cause that's what it says for when your battery's low. But actually it's just messing up the charge, um, the voltage and stuff that's going through the fence. And uh, so not necessarily your battery's low on a green red uh, signal out of that, you might be arcing somewhere. So I didn't realize that at first and I was arcing, I believe on that corner and uh, we fixed that problem and no more issues. I was thinking this battery was dying super fast, but that's not, that wasn't the issue. So obviously make sure you don't have any contact. Haven't had any issues with grass, just so you know that our grass is not tall obviously, but uh, where it touches the ground, I've had zero issues um, with any anything regarding that of, of hurting the voltage. So. We're all squared away, and uh, we'll catch you next time.